Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and let me first start by thanking all of you for signing up for the email list for my new site, which is going to be launching on March 11th. Now, because you're on the email list, you're going to get early updates, like the launch date, like I just said, but you're also going to get updates as far as um, new content that's going to be coming and other freebies and such like that, and even after the site launches, you'll be updated on any specials or other freebies that will come along as well. So again, thank you for that. And also as a thank you, I wanted to give you guys a free tutorial just to kind of give you an idea of what's going to be on the site. It's going to be all the cool, fun Photoshop stuff that we've done over the years, only now it's going to be um, a little bit more concentrated into a central location, and we're just going to continue to have fun with some inspired learning in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into a tutorial right now, just to kind of give you guys, like I said, an idea of what's coming. So this is, of course, a movie-based tutorial. It's, of course, based on the new movie Deadpool that just opened this weekend, which I did see, and it is amazing. It's hilarious, it's entertaining, and certainly not for the kids. This is an adult comic book movie, and it is a lot of fun, so be sure to check that out. So what I wanted to show you is a quick little text effect that I saw on the Deadpool poster and really easy to achieve uh, here using 3D in Photoshop. So I've got my um, background image already set up here and what I'm going to do is go ahead and set the text. Now, the text, I actually found a font over at one of my favorite font sites. It's called dafont.com, uh, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And I found a font called Rogue Hero uh, Regular. See it right up here on the options bar? So I'm going to go and click a set, a text layer, and let's just go ahead and do, we'll do our own movie and call it Leadpool. Why not? It's close enough. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set that and center that text in the middle there. Let's go ahead and fill it with white so we can see it. So... What I'm going to do first is go ahead and uh, make it a 3D object. Now, just simply go under the 3D menu and go down here and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. It's going to go ahead and extrude the text, and let's go ahead and open up the 3D panel uh, right here. You want to have the 3D panel and the Properties panel open when you're working with 3D because they work with each other. So, you see the text has been extruded. Now, what I'm going to do now is go into the first tab here and we're first thing is we're going to adjust the extrusion depth now with the text uh, main text item uh, selected here in the 3d panel you'll see over in the properties panel there is the extrusion depth so let's go ahead and drop that to a very low number let's do like 50 pixels on that one and if i rotate let's actually turn it there you can see not that not as thick now it's much better all right so now what I want to do is create a, a rather interesting bevel effect similar to what I saw in the poster. So again, I'm going to select the main text item here in the 3D panel. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and click on the third tab over, which will let you access the bevel settings right here. Now I'm going to set the bevel to around 15. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So it gives me a, see, it gives me a standard 45 degree angle bevel, and that's fine. But we're going to adjust that a little bit by going into this little contour menu. When you click on that, you're going to see the contour editor. And, you're, and here you can see that 45 degree line that represents that 45 degree um, bevel um, edge there. By adding and um, moving around the control points and changing the line here, I'm actually going to add a corner mark here, and let's just put a little bit of a bend here. And when I do that and click OK, you'll see the bevel takes on a different form. It makes it a little bit more interesting. In fact, I'm going to make that line a little bit steeper there. Let's go like that and put that bottom curve there just like that. There we go. So now we're getting a, the rather interesting look on the text, and that's as simple as that. As far as getting the look and shape of the text, now we need to start building it up with texture. All right, now, uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to adjust one thing here. I'm going to go to my 3D panel. I'm noticing I'm seeing the ground plane shadow, which is on by default when you create a 3D object like this, and I don't necessarily need it. So I'm going to go into the environment property in the 3D panel. And over here under the shadow settings, you can see there's a ground plane section here. And the opacity setting is at the default 60%. Now, normally you just go ahead and set it to zero, and that will go ahead and get rid of the shadow. But I'm noticing something that uh, rather annoying that happens when I do this. When I set it to zero, you'll notice that there's this rather annoying moray-ish kind of pattern over the text. Now, it doesn't really do anything to the object or the quality of itself. It's just an annoying visual thing that's there. So in order to get rid of that, here's a little workaround. Instead of setting the opacity to 0, just set it to 1. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of that um, if it's doing it on your uh, machine there. So, so if you're experiencing that, that's uh, one little workaround there. Okay, back to the textures. So let's go, and I've got 
several texture files I want to use here. Um, oftentimes, I will find myself blending textures rather than just using one texture. Now, I'm not saying one texture isn't going to give you what you want, but sometimes blending several will give you something um, rather interesting. So I've got this one and this one here. It's kind of a kind of roughness to it. And then this one's got some cool scratches and things like that on it. So I just want to kind of blend, you know, the, the properties of each of these together. And I've already done the experimentation to determine the best blend here for the sake of time. So I'm going to use this one as a base. And I'm just going to go and drag and drop this one over and add the shift key when you do this. And that will uh, land it in the center there. So I'm going to press command T and then command zero and expand it out. And let's go ahead and scale it in. And I'm going to change the blend mode of that layer to hard light. And that's going to uh, blend with the texture below really, really nicely. Uh, so let's take the third texture over and go ahead and drag and drop it over. Again, holding the shift key down when I do. And this time I'm going to change this one from normal to multiply. And that's going to allow that texture to blend even more so. Now, if any of these textures, when you try different blend modes, you like a blend mode, but it's still a little too intense. Remember, just drop the layer opacity down a little bit and that'll take care of that. All right, so I like that blend. So let's go ahead and flatten this image. And I'm going to do a Command A. And let's do Command C, copy it to the clipboard. Back in our original document, let's go ahead and press Command V and then just paste this into the file. And uh, it's actually the right size. Everything looks good. And that looks really good. All right. So now I want to make a new copy of this texture based on these dimensions, which is why I dragged and, I dragged and drop it over here. So I'm going to do a Command A again, and then Command C, and that's going to copy it to the clipboard. Now we can just do a new document just to make sure that we've got the right file size there, and there it is. All right. So now let's turn that layer off, reselect the 3D layer, and I'm going to go back into my main text item here in the in the 3D panel. And then select the item just below, which is the front inflation material. And then when you do that, go to the diffuse property in the properties panel here at the very top. Click on the folder icon and choose new texture. Now it's going to remember the dimensions. And let's go ahead and click OK. And now it opens up the document. Now you'll notice you'll see a little wireframe, which you can change the color of um, here in the properties panel at the very bottom where you see UV overlays. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker. It's simply a wireframe of the text so you can see exactly how it's going to look. So now I'm going to paste their texture in there. And you can see it looks pretty good. Now when I click Command S or uh, Command Save, and you'll see that it updates in the 3D text and we've got our texture on there and it looks really good. But now I want to add a color to it. So in this uh, texture file, we're going to create a new blank layer and we're going to give it a color fill, just a flat red color. So again, I'm going to Option Delete, fill that in. Go to the Blend Mode menu, and let's change this to Multiply. No, actually, Multiply is too dark. Let's do Hard Light. There we go. Okay. So now, uh, again, I'm going to do a Command S and Save, and it's going to update it. And now we see the um, front face of the text has got the nice red texture to it, and that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to close this now for the moment, and let's zoom in here. Now, what I want to do is it's got a nice texture look on it, but I want to have it really kind of rough, like you can almost touch it and feel the roughness to it. So in the properties panel for this layer, or for this uh, front inflation material, you're going to go down to where it says bump right here, and go over to the menu at the far right, and then go into the little menu and choose the front inflation material right here. And that's going to apply it as a bump map. You can see how, mu how much rougher the text got just there. So that looks pretty good. So now, let's go in, or back into that um, diffuse property again, back in the original document. And you're going to want to be able to see both documents for what we're going to be doing next here. So I'm going to zoom that out. So now we're on the texture. We're going to use this wireframe so we can see what we're doing here. Let's actually make it white. Now over here in the layers panel, we've got the red fill layer. I'm going to go ahead and click and add a layer mask to that layer. And I'm going to go grab a brush tool. Now the brush I'm going to get is part of the default set in Photoshop. It's actually right here under the pencil brush, and it's just a chalk 36 is the name. So go ahead and choose that. And I'm just going to make a new layer just so you can see how the brush behaves. So typical behavior, we need to change it a lot though. So open up your brush panels, or your brush options panel rather. And first start by setting the spacing really far apart here. 
And we'll go to our shape dynamics, make the size jitter. We'll take the angle jitter a little bit here. Just kind of give it a little bit of a scatter effect there. In fact, let's add some scattering. Why not? Uh, so a little bit like that. And uh, move out of the way so we can brush it. So make your brush size a little bit more. So it's just a rough pattern brush. Now I'm going to select that layer mask. And I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in here and just paint around the edge, just using that wireframe as a guide and paint around the edge of the lettering on that layer mask. And it's going to reveal the original texture below, but when I cl uh, click Command S, look what it does to the original. Oh, zoom that in here. And now it's giving me that kind of chipped edge along the, um, along the edge of the text there. So just continue to do that around. In fact, let's adjust the spacing here a little bit. There we go. All right, something like that. And we'll just kind of brush it around the edge there. Again, just using the edge of the text, uh, the edge of the wireframe as a guide. If I hit Command S again there, you can see I'm getting that chipped uh, version again. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead and do it to all the other uh, letters real quick, and then we'll jump to that and then continue on. So let's go. All right, so you can see I've done all the edges of the text just to kind of give that chipped paint wore out look on the edge of the text there. Uh, but I still have this texture file open because I want to do a little bit more to this. So again, you can see on the layer mask there uh, that I've painted this effect, I want to add it, add a little bit more enhancement to it. So I'm going to make a selection of that layer mask by command clicking right on the layer mask itself. And those elements are now selected. Now, in a layer mask, of course, the white area is the active area and the black area is the inactive area, which is hiding the layer. So in this case, I need to inverse the selection. So go to Select and choose Inverse. And on a new layer above the red filled layer, let's go ahead and create a new blank one if you don't already have one, and go ahead and fill that selection with white, like you see right there. Now, I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to Overlay. And that's going to give me a little bit more intense look on that background element there. But I'm also going to drop the layer opacity quite a bit. So if I click Save there, you can see what it's done is it has enhanced the overall chipped areas of the text there. So that looks pretty good. Now, one last thing I'm going to do is get my brush tool. And this is a, a tool preset I created a while back. Um, it's, it's just a battle damage brush, and it's just a scratch brush that... Um, Let's go ahead and make it up, uh, paint with black, paint on a new layer here, and let's just paint around the area of the text. And you can see it's kind of scattering that scratch look around it, but look what it's done to the text there. If I undo it, see, now watch as I paint. Now also notice as you paint, you see a little target that appears that lets you know where you're painting on your object. But as I paint the scratches on there, you can see it kind of taking shape there and adding a little bit more grunge and depth to the... Um, texture there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, save the changes, and there we have pretty gritty front edge of the text there. Now, so now let's um, put some finishing touches on the bevel. And with that, we're going to go ahead and do the same texture we did a while ago. In fact, is that still on the clipboard? Yes, it is. All right. So on that one, we're going to go to the layer front bevel material here in the 3D panel. Again, go over to the diffuse property for this one, hit new texture. And OK, paste it in there, go ahead and close it, save the changes, and now we've got that texture on the edge. And you can go ahead and add it to the extrusion. Uh, we don't really see the extrusion that much, but go ahead and just add it anyway. That way it's there. Let's again, paste it, close it, there we have it. OK. So there we have our Deadpool text. So now it's just a matter of adjusting the lighting and doing the render. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and jump back in the 3D panel and the properties panel, click on the little light bulb to access the lighting, and let's change the default infinite light into a spotlight. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and click, down here you'll see these point at origin and move to view. Click on those just to make sure it's positioned in the front, and make sure the move tool is selected. So now you can see the wireframe for my spotlight here. And I'm actually, you know what, I think I'm going to use a point light. You have three different lights available to you, point, spot, and infinite. Um, 
Funny enough, the infinite light is the default one, but it's my least favorite. So let's go ahead and do a point light, which is just a small point of light, shines light in all directions. When I move it in 3D closer, you see the, the light gets more focused. So I'm actually going to pull it back and up. And that gives me kind of a cool lighting effect like that. Now to cheat the lighting here in this scene a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and throw a layer style on the 3D layer, which you can do, and add a simple drop shadow. And that's going to give me the illusion that the shadow is being cast by the light that's being shining on the 3D text itself. And there we go. So now it's just a matter of doing a render. Now before I do the render, let's go ahead and select that background texture layer. Remember that one right here? I'm going to go ahead and throw a layer mask on that and just kind of give it a little bit of a fade top and bottom. And that looks good. So now I'll reselect the layer and we'll go to the 3D menu here and go ahead and choose render 3D layer. And it's going to go ahead and start render it. So there you have it. So yeah, I went kind of fast through it, but it just gives you an idea of some of the cool stuff, many of the cool things we're going to be doing on my new site that again launches on March 11th. So be on the lookout for it. And again, thank you guys for signing up for the email. And there's a lot of cool stuff in store for you guys. So be sure to check it out. We'll see you guys soon.